Welcome to Epic Stock Due Diligence. Please subscribe at youtube.com forward slash epic stock DD. Thank you. Hey everyone, Ed here. I just wanted to take a moment to thank everyone for all your support. I'm getting a lot more uh, subscribers on my YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed already, that's youtube.com forward slash epic stock DD. And what I'm about to do is provide everyone with a, uh, with a presentation that I put together. Now, again, I'm not an expert. I trade uh, stocks, primarily microcap stocks, uh, recreationally, and I've, I've learned a lot of, uh, of cool tricks and uh, tips along the way. And I just wanted to put everything together into, well, most everything together into a presentation that should, uh, should be easy to follow by both beginners people that haven't even touched the stock market before. And maybe there's some tidbits of information in here for people that have been trading for a while that they'll be like, wow, you know, that's neat. And it'll enable, uh, it'll enable one to uh, further expand upon their own personal knowledge within whatever area. So uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get started with this, uh, with this presentation. And before we do, though, I want to encourage you, please share this presentation with others. I want to get uh, as many views as I can. That's that's why I put this content together. I'm a, I guess you would say I'm just kind of a stock market nerd. <laughs> I've always enjoyed the uh, the stock market because it's so complex and there's so many things that one can uh, focus upon within the stock market to constantly entertain themselves. It's not all about making money. People are likely going to make money. People are likely going to lose money, and hopefully, if they do lose money they only put on the table what they were willing to lose. My philosophy, as always, with trading stocks is 100% of everything I put in to the stock market, I expect to lose 100%. So if I do get a stock that goes no bid and I lose 100%, oh well, I expected it. But if I make a few thousand percentage increase, hey, that's, that's a nice uh, pat on the back from the stock market. So without further ado, here we go. Uh, let's uh, roll over here to the presentation. <laughs> Hey everyone, just wanted to put together a presentation uh, regarding the stock market. Now the stock market, it may seem a little complicated at times, uh, but what I'm going to attempt to accomplish within this presentation is laying out all the basics that anyone would need to know and further develop to be able to uh, begin trading stock. Now I've been trading stock since the uh, early days of internet technologies had quite a bit of experience in the, sp in the space. I'm not a professional. I do it, of course, for entertainment purposes only. So, have had a lot of success, have had some failures along the way, but, I mean, that's part of it. So, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, I'd like to start out with my disclaimer. All contents within are for entertainment purposes only. None of the comments within should be considered a recommendation to buy or sell security. The first thing that a stock trader is going to need are some essential tools. The first item is a few hundred dollars of disposable cash. Now notice I did say disposable because anything that's invested in the stock, even if everyone believes that there's nothing that could go wrong with the stock, a stock can always surprise you. There are no guarantees, so expect to lose 100% of your investment. Consider ever and Every investment in stock market speculative, so don't put any don't put in any cash that you were not willing to lose. The second item that you'll need is a uh, computer and an internet connection. I personally use uh, Mac computers, Apple computers now for my trading. I've got a sev several computers set up. I do level two quotes. So it, it enables me to see the charts and the, uh, and the quotes across multiple computers. You can also use a Windows computer. The operating system doesn't matter because most all of the uh, reputable online brokers nowadays support both platforms. The next item, of course, is an Internet broker. Internet broker is essentially the entity that one goes through when they buy or sell stock. Uh, in the past, the broker would be a brick-and-mortar location uh, before the Internet existed. You'd walk down, pass them a check, say, hey, I want to buy X amount of shares of company XYZ. You know, here's, here's my money. No, it's, it's, it's completely changed now with the Internet. So 
Internet broker is pretty much a standard. I, I would not trade any other way. Uh, just because it's you're able to directly control it, and then also the commission is a lot lower than the traditional brick and mortar broker. Okay, you got to have a positive and a can-do attitude. The uh, just like a stock can go up and down, your attitude can go up and down. But even if your stock's down, keep your attitude uh, very chipper because if you don't, it's it's not going to be a game that you'll continue to want to play. And the final item of tools required is a willingness to accept 100% loss. As I expressed earlier, only put in what you're willing to lose. And more than likely, there's a good chance you'll probably lose every penny of it. But let's get to the fun stuff. Choosing a broker. A few things you'll want to consider. Now, if you're, if you're wanting to get into penny stocks, also referred to as micro cap stocks, those are the most volatile stocks. They can produce the greatest financial reward. Uh, but with that volatility comes an enhanced level of risk. So if you're, if you're planning to play primarily penny stocks instead of your big boards, uh, your big board stocks being New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, American Stock Exchange, etc. You know, when you turn on your popular news network and you see that little ticker across the bottom, those are most often big board stocks. But you probably want to go ahead and get a broker that's micro cap stock friendly as well, uh, just because as you, if you do enjoy trading stocks, you'll likely become involved with uh, micro cap stocks in the future as well. So make sure they're micro cap stock friendly. Make sure they have a reasonable commission. Well, in today's turbulent economic times, everybody's starting to charge more. Uh, but at the time of posting this video, uh, during the year 2012, I believe that a commission, a reasonable commission, should be $12 or less per trade. So that's $12 or less when you buy it, when you're adding stock, and $12 or less when you're letting go of the stock. Another thing that a broker should have is level two, also commonly referred to as L2 quotes. Now this is a more advanced item, but we will touch on it here in a minute. Now level two is just a at a high level, it's a way for a trader to uh, more actively gauge where a stock may be heading by looking at various uh, uh, financial institutions that are on the bid and the ask sides of the fence. We'll talk more about that here in a moment. The final requirement that I would expect from a broker, from an internet broker, would be a practice account. Now, what a practice account enables one to do is to trade live stocks. So during market hours, you can you can buy and sell, but the only uh, the only difference is that you're not actually buying or selling that stock. You're you're placing uh, in essence real trades, but without real dollars linked to it. So if they were successful or they failed, nobody's out any money because there's no real money on the table. It's just a simulated environment. Learn the basics first. This is one of the things everybody comes up to me and they're like, you know, how do you, how do you trade stocks? Well, it's not one of those things like how do you ride a bicycle? It's a lot more complex, but it's not overly complex. Once you get the hang of it, super simple and something that, that most people may continue to enjoy and improve upon. But the most basic of basic stock market things that everybody must know is there's two sides of the fence. There's the ask. The ask is what one would pay if they're purchasing a new stock or maybe they've already got a stock and they're adding more shares of that same stock. That would be the ask, the A-S-K. And then the bid, if you already own stock and you're letting go of it, you would be selling that stock at the bid. So Here's, here's a good example. Say you bought a stock, it was a dollar a share. And as soon as you buy it, you want to sell it because you realize for whatever reason you made a mistake or you don't want it. That, do, that stock is priced at one dollar on the ask because that's what you paid to buy. But the bid is 80 cents. So immediately, for this fictitious example, since there is a, uh, a significant spread between bid and ask, 
you would immediately incur a loss if you attempted to sell because the bid is lower than the ask. So that's just a quick example there. It's uh, just a basic, uh, a basic item that everyone must know. And when you turn on your popular financial news network and you see that uh, ticker at the bottom, that price down there is most often the ask price. Now with big board stocks, the spread between ask and bid is typically not that noticeable. But when you're dealing with micro cap stocks, penny stocks, it's not uncommon to see a uh, to see a stock where a, where an ask price would be maybe even 50% higher than the bid price. Next basic skill to know is always use limit orders and never, and I repeat, never use a market order. And at a high level, what, what a limit order is, it's an order where one can specify a price and quantity. Whereas with market order, one can only specify quantity. And as rapidly as most stocks move, if someone, for example here, say that they, uh, they had $100 to invest. And they said, okay, I want to buy 100 shares of fictitious company XYZ. So they put in quantity of 100. And they do a market order. Let's say that uh, that uh, stock rapidly appreciates in price. So they said they want to buy 100 shares. Well, it was at a dollar when they entered the order. But it all of a sudden jumped to five dollars. So now what they intended to spend one hundred dollars to purchase, they're now out five hundred dollars, so they're four hundred dollars in the hole. So never use limit order. I mean never I'm sorry, never use market orders because there's a possibility of unexpected uh, loss there. Use a limit order, because if you used a limit order, you would say buy one hundred shares of fictitious company. XYZ at limit price of one dollar. So then you would get a hundred shares. Of course you got to work in commission there. So realistically you'd probably be looking at buying about 90 shares, assuming commission was ten dollars. You'd be doing 90 shares at a limit uh, by price of one dollar, which would be ninety dollars and it'll be ten dollars for commission. So those are just some of the most extreme basic skills there. Uh, the next item that we've touched on is the play with fake money first. Now this is using your broker's practice account. As you can see me there, I'm right in front of a stingray, stingray out in the Cayman Islands. <laughs> and that's, that's a live stingray. But, uh, you know, you don't want to assume risk with, uh, w w with your real money first. I mean, in this case, I was in, a, I was in the ocean, but I was in a controlled environment. The gentleman in front of me is a local in the Cayman Islands, so he knows how to handle the uh, the stingrays. Now, if I dove straight into that water without anybody else around, I might have gotten uh, uh, stuck by a stingray barb, and that wouldn't have been fun. So use your broker's practice account and learn how to place uh, trades first. So you can actually, and, and any quality broker should, uh, should set you up with this. Now, one broker that I personally recommend, there's actually two. I really enjoy Ameritrade. And fidelity because they're both penny stock friendly. I like Ameritrade's tools the best. I like their level two tools uh, a lot, but the uh, commission for fidelity, at least at, at present, is a little bit lower than Ameritrade. But it's it's insignificant. It's a few bucks. Nothing uh, nothing to worry about. But yeah, they their customer service. If you set up an account, they should point you to the uh, information about the practice account, and it's just a really good. Uh, really good learning opportunity. So play around with that first. You know, watch the news, watch whatever uh, source for easily obtainable information you may use, you know, Jim Cramer or, or uh, <laughs> turn on CNBC or Bloomberg or something like that and just randomly pick some companies that, pe that they're touting and, you know, purchase them with your practice account. See if they go up and down, up or down and see uh, what, if anything, you would have made had it been real money out of pocket. So just a way to build your confidence there before you start putting uh, real money into the uh, stock market. And the next item before you actually put real money into the stock market is to master the due diligence process. So this is your own research. You know, Do your own due diligence. Determine risk. Or is, is fictitious company XYZ, is it worth the risk? Or is it just so far out there? Now keep in mind, sometimes with greater re 
with, with the most risk comes the most reward, but also with the most risk, especially if you're starting out, you may you may pick a play and and lose it all. So don't put all of your uh, you know don't put all of your eggs in one basket when you're starting out. But uh, some things that I do, I use forums. Uh, one of my favorite forums is Investor Hub, a commonly referred to as iHub among stock traders. Now that's just InvestorsHub.com. There's a lot of spam on there, but there's a lot of useful information, and there's a lot of highly knowledgeable stock traders. So it's a great way to to hop in, look at what people are talking about. Uh, take the uh, the items that they're talking about, and of course, do your own due diligence. Go out to uh, go out to sites such as OTCMarkets.com, uh, research the claims that are made within the forum. See if that is a valid press release. See if you can pull the same news up from that from that source. Check other sites as well. I mean, for the for the big board stocks, you can find a lot of information on. Uh, sites such as finance.yahoo.com and then also within your within your internet broker itself there's news in there you can do a lot of uh, research on your own you can look at stock charts stockcharts.com is a great place for stock charts you can look at the charts that are included within your uh, within your internet broker so you know do your own research never never blindly jump into anything without doing your own research first because if you do you won't be able to blame yourself. And if you jump in on it after performing your own due diligence, if it's a good pick, if it's a poor pick, at least you know that you made it and you're the only person responsible for it. So this is where it gets fun. You're taking the first live plunge. So after uh, developing your personal level of confidence with placing uh, limit orders to buy stock and to sell stock, and by the way, it's all always a sell whether you're buying or selling, but that's that's a very technical thing um, that that you will, if you further research the stock market in particular level two quotes, uh, you'll understand that there's always somebody selling. There's never actual buying, but as a retail investor, like like most people are, you're getting into your internet broker and you're wanting to buy stock. For those purposes, you're buying stock with a limit order, and when you've hopefully made a profit, you're selling stock. With a uh, with a limit order, so taking your first plunge, place a limit order to buy those shares, of whatever quantity that that you're comfortable with. Say say you started out your account with 500 bucks and you wanted to to get started. Probably something I would do is do 50 bucks. So I'd do like uh, I'd do like uh, buy uh, and let's say this was a penny stock. So I'd say buy. Uh, you know, a thousand shares of uh, of company uh, of comp fictitious company X Y Z at a limit price of uh, of tri uh, triple zero dot zero 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 two, and you could get a ton of that for for uh, for fit for under fifty bucks. But you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. But then again, don't start out with so many stocks that you can't keep a close eye on all of them. Uh, typically what I would recommend, at least I know when I started out, I only had one or two stocks. That way I could stay abreast of all the current press releases from the company. And, and keep in mind, I started out with big board stocks, did not start out with penny stocks. But uh, you might want to start out with a big board stock. So take that 50 bucks, maybe buy uh, with, with $50, maybe buy because you're going to have about probably about ten dollar commission or whatever it varies among brokers, but you could you would have forty dollars you could sink into, let's say a dollar a share stock. Dollar a share stock is kind of risky, but a dollar a share stock those can be can be uh, great movers at times because there are listing requirements and most uh, most of the exchanges out there don't allow stocks to be traded on the big boards. At a share price of a dollar or less. So sometimes, if you get uh, you get a stock that's a dollar a share, let's just say you bought forty shares at a dollar, and then the company really gets their act together. I mean, that's that's something that potentially could be easy to uh, to have a, a significant percentage increase if they get their act together and try to get away from that dollar per share price. So that might be a fun way to start, just buy you know forty shares of a dollar a share stock, and just see what happens. 
And one thing I recommend after you actually acquire those shares, so after the order is actually filled and you've got those 40 shares within your account, you might want to go ahead and put in a limit sell order at a specified price. So say you bought them at a dollar. Say you wanted to let go of uh, let go of some of them if, if it hit a dollar and fifty cents. So uh, let's just say, I mean, I don't know. You can put whatever in there. Some people like to put in specify within their limit sell order to just sell enough to break even. So in other words, cover their initial investment cost plus the commission, and then they can in essence do what's called ride freebies. So whether the stock performs well or tanks in the future you shouldn't care. It takes the emotion out because you've already gotten your initial investment back and you can ride those in essence free shares uh, to uh, success or failure. So that's one strategy you may want to use. But I always make a habit of putting in a limit sell order as soon as I acquire a position because that takes emotion out of it. And I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm willing to lose it all still but I'm, I'm hoping, to, uh, hoping to meet a reasonable uh, percentage increase and hopefully my limit sell order will execute and sell some of my position so I get my money back. Maybe I'll get it back for a small profit. Maybe I want to put it up a little bit. That's completely up to the trader. One thing you uh, may want to do after you become more experienced with this is purchase additional companies. So you don't just have one or two companies. Maybe you've got a, uh, an assortment of companies because diversification is very important. That way if you've got a few dogs in your, in your bag and then you've got some that are just rockets. It it, it all it typically it can it can balance out better. But you don't want to get so many that you can't track them all as I as I stated earlier. So you you if you uh, one thing that I do I I deal with some stocks that I know are going to be highly volatile. That I assume are going to be highly volatile rather, and I don't try to get too many of those. But if there's some that are somewhat stable, and keep in mind no stock is 100% stable and able to be predicted but uh, there are some stocks that are less uh, less likely to jump around than others and you'll kind of identify that as as you become more experienced with the game but if you have a lot of stocks that seem to be more stable those you probably don't have to keep as close of an eye on and the likelihood of all of those moving rapidly in one direction or the other is slimmer so if you did have one of those more stable stocks start to move, it likely wouldn't be the whole pot of them. So you wouldn't have to be, let's say you had 20 stocks total, you had like two high risk stocks and then 18 what you consider to be stable stocks. If only one of those what you consider to be stable stocks started to move rapidly upwards or downwards, you would only be monitoring three uh, rapidly moving stocks because you had those two high risk stocks and then one of those 18 that just surprised you and started moving. So you don't have to, you, you know, it's, it's a situation where you can have a lot of stock, but you don't have to uh, devote a lot of time to keeping a constant eye on all of them. And then one thing you probably want to do to further, uh, to further develop your knowledge is really dive in, understand what level two quotes mean. And I'll quickly summarize. Level two quotes, when you're looking at level two, you're looking at the individual MPIDs, the market makers. Now, a market maker is a financial institution, and every time you buy stock or sell stock, you're dealing with a market maker. So, now when you're when you're adding that stock, you're you're dealing with a market maker that's on the ask side of the fence. And when you're selling stock that you already own, you're dealing with a market maker that's on the bid side of the fence. Now, all of these financial institutions, as you do your own research, uh, you'll you'll realize that a lot of these financial institutions that are the market makers tend to deal with certain types of security. So learning a lot about level two quotes can better enable a trader, in particular a micro cap penny stock trader, to gauge where a stock may be heading. Level two quotes is one of the most valuable tools out there for me personally. Stock charts, a lot of people swear by, uh, swear by stock charts. I'm not much of a chart guy, but I do like to use charts from the perspective I want to know where a stock's been in the past. It, has it split a lot, reverse split or forward split? Is there anything in that chart that may predict uh, a future performance? Stock charts can be a great thing to master. And a lot of people trade exclusively by looking at a stock chart. They don't care about, any, about anything else. I'm not a stock chart only trader. 
Another area that you may want to work to master is proactively spotting potem potential manipulation. If you see traders in forums that are typically uh, involved with pump and dumps, uh, pump and dumps meaning a stock that rapidly appreciates in price and rapidly tanks, it may be a good idea to stay away from stocks, from future stocks that they're associated with. Uh, also, uh, other forms of manipulation, penny stock newsletters, uh, typically those are only out for the better uh, financial gain of the person behind the newsletter. At a high level, what a penny stock newsletter will typically do, uh, they'll promote a stock. They're already completely loaded. The people that that are uh, that are behind the newsletter, they've already got their positions at a low price point. And then they'll make everybody feel privileged because they're on this mailing list and they get a, an alert, hey, buy fictitious company XYZ, it's about to explode. So they've already got all their shares at a low price. All of those people buy in because they feel privileged that they're receiving this information in this newsletter. And then the people that were originally in, the people that were behind the newsletter, they quickly get out and run away with everybody else's money. Because other people don't get out. They're like, oh, this is going to go to the moon. And they don't exit. So, yeah, yeah, M manipulation. That's uh, the pump and dump, research pump and dumps, penny stock pump and dumps. You can learn a lot. And then all of these people on the Internet that, claim to be educators and then they've got a they've got a hidden agenda like they've got some sort of uh, uh, class or something I'm not gonna name drop because I know a lot of traders and I don't wanna to give any particular trader a bad reputation but if you do your searches for like stock education classes and stuff like that those people behind it they're usually pretty uh, pretty uh, scamish I guess you would say and then the uh, the, the next thing to master is consistently uh, find, the, find the sources for stock knowledge that have proven to be consistently reliable. So maybe that's a particular person on a forum. Maybe it's a uh, group on a forum. Find those sources. Or maybe it's a website. Whatever the source may be, if it's, if it's consistently provided uh, positive results, that may be a good thing to continue to reference. But as always, just because something worked well yesterday, doesn't mean it'll work well tomorrow. So there, there are definitely no guarantees with this. But it can, even if there's stocks you're not in, watch those sources, see how they perform, and maybe their next pick or whatever. Maybe that's something that uh, that you may want to speculate in. I mean, if it's if they've consistently proven to do well, maybe the next time they'll do well. Who knows? One thing that's super important is sharing your lessons learned. So your positive and your negative experiences. As you become involved with stocks, you'll become involved with uh, uh, with fellow trade fellow traders. Not necessarily in your own local community, but uh, on your own line within your own line forum communities. You'll inevitably be communicating with other traders to uh, to uh, improve your your stock uh, your stock profits. So. Uh, share share everything, negative and positive. Learn from them. Let them learn from you. This is, uh, and stocks are definitely something you should never become cocky. Uh, there are definitely no guarantees on Wall Streets, on Wall Streets, on Wall Street, rather. And, as, and again, as I pointed out earlier, strat a trading strategy that worked yesterday may never work again. And hey, it may be the best strategy ever a year from now. Who knows? All sorts of conditions come into play. Uh, that affect the market. And finally, always take profits along the way. If you're taking the time to do your due diligence, you're taking the time to uh, hopefully make some good money from the stock market, get away. You know, have put those put those limit orders in place, step away from it. Don't get yourself so hammered down uh, with too many different stocks. And definitely never put in money that you couldn't afford to lose 100% of because that's where people get in a mess. Only do what you can do and comfortably management. Manage it, rather. So in other words, you could step away and not have anything to worry about because everything that's in there is money that you intended to lose. But when you're away, you know, you go to the islands or wherever, right there, I'm at, I just got out of the spa at uh, Peter Island in the British Virgin Islands. But uh, wherever you may be, you, you, you need to just step away from it for at least a week or so. At least a week or so once a year, because otherwise it'll, it'll drive most people crazy. But 
I appreciate you watching this video and uh, encourage you to share this video with others. And thanks for tuning in and y'all have a good day.